last week's lecture was uh, entitled The Human Machine. And in that lecture, we discussed that um, the vessels that uh, the psyche utilizes in the world, the physical body, the emotions, and the mind are uh, each one having their own particular types of energy, particular types of psychological energy. Of course, we talked about how the mind is related with concepts and opinions and ideas and plans. It is a tool. And the emotions related with sentiment, moods, feelings, and the physical body, which is divided into three centers. The moving center, which is related with the movement of the physical vessel, of the physical vessel. The instinctive center of the physical body, which is related with metabolism, digestion, um, any instinctive process, biological process in our bodies. And the third, being the sexual center, which is related with reproduction and. Uh, creation. These five centers, which we also call three brains because we divide the last three centers, the lowest three centers, into the physical or we call it the instinctive brain, are um, different facets of the machine of the human machine or the humanoid machine. They are receptors, recept we get like receptacles for forces that come from the superior dimensions so that we can maintain life in the physical world, in the emotional world, and in the mental world. We know that the ray of creation, which last week we broke down or we synthesized into the idea of a hydrogen, that hydrogen or the ray of creation sustains all life in all of the dimensions, all seven dimensions of the tree of life, all seven dimensions of the manifested universe in the infinite which is related with the logoic world, the galaxy, which is related with the monadic essences, in the solar system, related with the mind, the planetary zone, related with the heart, the physical body, the third dimension, that hydrogen, which sustains all creation, we know is made of three parts, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. We say that every atom really is a type of hydrogen because we take the word hydrogen, etymologically speaking, from Greek hydro meaning water and gen meaning to generate or the genesis, a sexual creative aspect of the water. That water, that force, that all life is contained within. That force that is contained within all life. It is the seed of the tree of life. So these uh, five centers of the human machine, which uh, we can characterize or see in the tree of life as the four lowest sephiroth, Netzach, Hod, Yesod, and Malkuth, are the lowest aspects of creation, the material aspects. They are matter. From mind down to physical body, we call this material. 
and even these material bodies are sustained by the hydrogen, by the three primary forces, the logos, the proton being the father, the electron being the son, and the neutron being the Holy Spirit, the proton being Weiwei Tseoru, the electron being Quetzalcoatl, and the neutron being Tlaloc, the trinity, the Triamazikamno, the ray of creation, the creative impulse, descends from the absolute, <coughs> takes up many transformations, we can say that it takes up more and more complexity as it descends. The ray of creation descends from the absolute down to the physical plane. The absolute is perfect, free, we can say, let's say the logos, or the infinite, the manifested universe, is free life, free light. There is not uh, uh, the forms of matter to trap that light. It is creation and creative intelligence without complexity, without form, without uh, um, laws. The only law is the law of the Father, the law of, uh, of the creation itself. But when it descends, in order to usher in creation, so that every being, every monad, has an opportunity to realize the... the it's, we could say, to realize itself, to realize the knowledge of itself. It has to, that light has to take up more and more complex vibrations, complex states. So it descends to the sixth dimension, to the world of the monad, and then to the world of the mind, and then to the world of the astral plane, the physical plane, being the most dense, with the most laws. We said that the physical plane is ruled by 48 laws. The astral plane is, ru is ruled by 24 laws. The mental plane is ruled by 12 laws. The causal dimension and the electronic world are ruled by 6 laws. And the logoic world is ruled by 3 laws. Each law being a different arrangement of the three laws, a different arrangement of the hydrogen, of the fecundated water, of Divine Mother. You guys understand that? So we use this word hydrogen as the, we can say like the most primitive element. And we use these, uh, these numbers are related with its complexity. The higher the number, the more complex the more base, the more material, the more dense. The lower the number, the more the light is moving faster, free in its movement. That's why a clairvoyant, when a clairvoyant can perceive the internal dimensions, dimensions that we can't perceive, it's because the light is moving at a frequency that's not perceivable to the five senses. But when we awaken a sense, an occult power that has the ability to perceive light in its faster movement, in its freer movement, we call that clairvoyance. For example, the light in the astral plane is ruled by half as many laws as the light in the physical plane. We can only perceive the astral plane if we are away from our five senses. We don't perceive the astral plane while we're here in class in the physical plane. We do it when the physical body is sleeping, the five senses are shut down, and the consciousness is extracted into the astral plane. Whether we are consciously awake, aware, self-aware, or we are dreaming, we're perceiving astral light. And that astral light is everywhere. But when we begin to really awaken occult powers, or would better if we say awaken consciousness, we're able to perceive the light of the astral plane, the light of the mental plane, the light of the superior dimensions in an objective and precise manner. But in order to do that, we need to be assimilating superior types of energy. But currently, those energies that we need to utilize are being wasted, are being squandered.
We talked about last week that the problem with the human machine is that the five centers conflict with each other. When it's time to be to feel through the heart, we think. When it's time to do something, we feel. When it's time to think, we do. We have not learned the conscious the, the consciousness has not learned to utilize the human machine in its correct way. Because the ego, the myself, desire, utilizes the human machine to waste, actually really to feed itself, to steal the hydrogens in the different brains. The ego steals the hydrogens of the brain, of the, of the intellect when we overplan, overthink, overworry. An emotional romantic ego of lust steals hydrogens from the emotional center through its identification, through its fantasy. Uh, we could say different egos of physical pride steal energy from the physical, instinctive motor centers by over, overdoing, overworking out Right? People who are always trying to be very buff and strong, too athletic. They're stealing instinctive and motor energies. We know that when the ego is stealing energy, stealing hydrogens from the three brains and the five centers, they are always fueled by the sexual force. And thus, they have to steal energy from the sexual force. But the sexual energy vibrating at the hydrogen 12 shocks the other brains because the hydrogen that belongs to the sexual force needs to remain in the sexual center only through transmutation only through a particular transformation should that energy <coughs> really be feeding the other centers but when the other centers are stealing that energy we have like a psychological short circuit. We have unbalance and we waste vast amounts of energy. All of the energy, all of the hydrogen in this universe descend from the absolute, from the heavens. Currently, we take in those energies and send them into the interior of the earth uh, uh, literally and philosophically. We take those energies and reflect them into our own psychological abyss, sending the superior forces that we need to be accumulating, building through equilibrium and transmuting. We send it and feed that which is the antithesis of the being, the antithesis of the consciousness. We feed it to the ego, which lives in the shadow of the tree of life, in our own subconsciousness, unconsciousness and infraconsciousness. What we have to learn to do is establish a type of psychological equilibrium. So that the energy that the human machine is constantly receiving from the cosmos can be harnessed, can be material to create with we talked about last week the creation of the solar astral body and the solar mental body through means of white tantra or alchemy, transmuting lead into gold to create the superior emotional center, the superior intellectual center. We need to create those superior bodies. And we need to go further to create the body of conscious willpower so that the human machine is, we can say, dominated by the whip of willpower conscious willpower dominated by the forces of the son of man the Christified human soul but in order to do that in order to reach that state we need a particular type of psychological uh, so the dynamic that we need we need to learn first of all how we receive these different energies. 
Uh, first, well, we know, obviously, that the chakras, <coughs> the seven chakras that lie along the dorsal spine, they really lie along the astral body, the internal bodies, the seven vortexes, or the seven churches of the book of Revelation, the seven major glands of internal secretion, receive and transmit different energies in our body, different forces. And really, those forces come from superior dimensions. They come from uh, transformations of the astral light. But let us look at, uh, we could say, the most mundane level, in that uh, the human machine has three stomachs. Three, we call them stomachs, or three digestive ways of digesting cosmic energy. The first is the most mundane, which is our physical stomach, the digestive system. The food is food and water that we receive. Fruits, vegetables, meats, drinks, breads, all of that, different transformations of solar light, of astral light. Just think of how the sun shines and fecundates the virgin earth so that the seed can sprout and the wheat can grow. And that wheat has inside of it a packet of solar light, a packet of astral light, a packet of cryptic fire that when we consume, gives us life. It is a transformation of the cryptic solar light in order for that light, in order for that wheat to grow, the seed has to die. And therefore, a transformation takes place. A type of change takes place so that something new can be born. So let us think about that. We'll come back to that. The second type of food, or the te second type of sustenance for the human machine is air. We need oxygen to, to be able to sustain life. And uh, air is, um, our breathing is ruled by our instinctive center, so is digestion. And everything that exists, every animal and humanoid at least that exists, has to take in food and air. But we don't have to really think about it. We don't have to do it consciously. This is something that takes place instinctively. We can eat without being awake, consciously speaking. Animals eat, uh, people eat without thinking about it, without, without any type of really self-awareness. Just to sustain mechanical life. And our mechanical life, in that case, serves mechanical nature. And mechanical nature, its purpose is to sustain its own life. The purpose of mechanical nature is not revolution. It's not change, it's cycle. Mechanical nature is a cycle that feeds itself. It is not concerned, the intelligence of mother nature is not concerned with the liberation of consciousness, the crystification of the soul. It's only concerned with feeding itself, with sustaining life, because that's its purpose. And therefore it's perfect that way. The third type of food, cosmic food, of the human machine and of the consciousness are impressions. Impressions, really, we can say, are what our lives are made out of. Without, impre without impressions, we would have no life. Do you understand that? If you didn't have eyes to see, or ears to hear, or smell, or touch, or taste, would this life be life for you? There'd be no one to perceive it. There'd be no life in the physical plane. It wouldn't exist for you. This world wouldn't exist for you. It exists. But if you were not able to receive impressions, you'd be dead. Or you wouldn't have life here. We can go for days without food. We can go for minutes without air. But a second without impression, there's no life. 
a, 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 an instant without an impression, there's no life. Impressions are what feed us psychologically, purely psychologically. The difference between impressions and air and food is that impressions do not digest, psychologically speaking, unconsciously. Just as the wheat has crystic fire, solar light inside of it, and the air has its sustenance, has its forces, its crystic forces that sustain life, Impressions also have vast amounts of energy inside of them. The forces of the cosmos that the human, so that the, that the human machine should be receiving for, for energy so that that uh, soul can transmute that energy to feed the psyche, to feed the soul, those forces are being received every single moment. Those forces are being received every single moment. But we don't digest them. We don't transform them. This is why we always stress to be here and now. In that case, if the consciousness is present, awake, in our own breathing state, as, I'm sorry, in our breathing space, right? our own, our own uh, like, uh, physical atmosphere. If we are aware of where we are, of the thoughts that we're thinking, of the emotions that we're feeling, we will be saving vast amounts of psychic forces, vast amounts of energy. Energy that will be fed to the superior centers of the human machine, energies that the Divine Mother Kundalini will utilize in the alchemist to create the solar astral body, the solar mental body, the human soul. It will be the energy that the being utilizes for the great work. Because that energy is Christic energy. It is fohat, it is fire. But for us, it is just matter, material, it's just life. And we think life is like a passing thing on the outside of us. Like there's this vast separation between what's going on inside of us in relation to what's going on outside of us. We think that there's like a, a big moat between our internal state and the external event our internal world and the external circumstances. But this is not the case. The truth is that uh, our inner life is a reflection of the outer life and our outer life is a reflection of the inner life. An impression is any um, any form, any type of like print that is received by our minds, any type of pressure, not pressure, what's the right word, Mike, have here? A strong effect produced on the intellect, feelings or senses. Uh, uh, an effect produced by an influence, an external influence. Or an impression is also a mark made by pressure, produced by pressure. So an impression, did I say it right? An impression is a mark that is produced by pressure. So, the impressions in us enter into us from the external world. The internal world is made up of our three brains, our five centers. And it receives impressions through the five senses. The impressions are what feed consciousness or the ego. When we, for example, when an ego is identified, for example, uh, lust, 
the eye of lust, the myself of lust, utilizes the three brains and the five senses in order to stimulate its fantasy. So it takes in the external circumstance, the external impression of a person of the opposite sex. Who maybe, let's say, in a particular circumstance, for a man, Master somebody who uses this example, he says that uh, if there's a man <coughs> who has an interaction with a woman, and the woman is very respectful, very nice, sweet, and maybe she has a favorable appearance, and the man is not observing himself, then the ego of lust, the desire, can translate, can take that impression and feed it to the uh, sexual center and to the intellectual center and think to himself, this girl obviously is in love with me, right? This person obviously really wants to be with me because look at the way she's acting. And therefore, lust begins to dream. Lust might use the intellect, might use the mind in order to create some type of fantasy realm with, uh, with him and that person. Or it might dream emotionally, romantically, a type of a romantic craving. But if this person confronted the woman, he may find that she has no interest in him at all. But he had no idea because of the way that his ego, of his eye, his desire, received that impression. And this takes place because of his ignorance, because of his lack of comprehension of the elements that are inside. The reason why we don't transform an impression, the reason why we don't transform our lives, is because of our lack of comprehension, our lack of knowledge of ourselves. Master Samael says that the only way that we can begin to transform impressions is when we comprehend the work. He says it over and over again in the chapter on transformation of impressions in the book Revolution of the Dialectic. We have to learn to comprehend, to understand. And through understanding, we begin to transform Every ego feeds itself, every I, every red demon inside of us, every separate personality, feeds itself from an impression. Every ego seeks for a type of stimulation, and that stimulation becomes an impression inside of us. You understand that? Gluttony looks for chocolate cake, lust looks for the opposite sex, Pride looks for a compliment. Jealousy, or maybe we say envy and uh, 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 covetousness, looks for uh, beautiful material things. Jealousy looks for uh, our spouse talking with another person. Fear looks for anything to feel insecure or secure. Greed, all of the eyes, the myself, utilize the human machine and the five senses to steal hydrogen. And so the ego has become very strong and very fat. And the consciousness becomes very weak. And therefore we are not awake. We are hypnotized. Because the human machine has become a puppet to idolatry, to desires. Because the mind is uh, controlled by the senses. You can say our three brains, our psychological constitution follows like a hunter. 
the impression that the ego is seeking. And so the hydrogens that we need to be accumulating in our psychological equilibrium, the hydrogens that the Divine Mother needs to create with are gone. They're lost. And so people can practice alchemy, for example, for years and years and years, but without transforming impressions, without reaching psychological equilibrium, without reaching balance, there's nothing to build with. We know that the sexual center is the root of all life. To be born again. How can one be born? Except through the sex. You're born because of a belief? Nobody here was born because their parents believed. No one was born here because someone thought of a concept and they just spontaneously manifested in the world. Obviously, thought and, and emotional desire led to uh, our, our creation, but really the conception is sexual. Creation is sexual. And all of the forces of creation, of the entire tree of life, the entire tree of the being, all of its characteristics are inside of the seed. You understand that? That the characteristics of an oak tree are in the acorn? And so when, you, when the acorn sprouts, it's not a lemon tree. It's an oak tree. All of the conscious parts of the being are also inside of the seed. But that seed needs to be strong. That hydrogen needs to be strong needs to have force so that when transmutation takes place there is fire to create with but in order to do that we have to transform our lives psychologically because our lives are led backwards taking in those cosmic forces and wasting them squandering them in fits of rage and anger why do we, we become angry because we don't comprehend an impression and we don't transform an impression. In order to digest life, to transform life, we have to comprehend it. No one is born already comprehending, already knowing. This takes super efforts. It begins with psychological, uh, we could say mind training or best uh, uh, self intimate self-observation. Are you thinking of self-observation? Then you're not observing yourself. Unless you're observing yourself thinking of self-observation. To observe oneself, to observe the human machine in all of its movements, in all of its instincts, in its sexual arousals, in its thoughts, its emotions, there has to be a separation from the vessel, from the vehicle themselves. The intelligence, the consciousness has to separate itself from the mind to watch the mind. And this type of separation comes through intense introspection. Becoming completely aware of what's inside in the moment, right now. And in that way, we begin to uh, uh, comprehend little by little, to pick up bits and pieces of information of what we have psychologically and what we don't have as virtues, as vices, consciousness and ego. We begin to see the different egos that arise in us on a daily basis that steal all of the psychological or psychic forces that we need to awaken. Our lives are just a series of impressions. If we want to change, if we want to transform life, we have to learn to transform impressions. In order to extract 
comprehension, understanding of those impressions, we have to learn to retrospect, to introspect, and retrospect, to review. See, the sensual mind extracts the forms of the external world. And those forms are taken into the mind, into the different sensors in the human machine. Obviously, it does not extract the matter from the external world. For example, when we look at a tree, its form is reflecting in our minds. But the tree is not inside of our brains because, well, that would be ridiculous. That would be impossible. Very painful. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's the form of it. But remember that uh, behind that form, there's also intelligence. And in all circumstances, there's a type of intelligence that we need to come, a type of, we could say, understanding that we need to extract that's related intimately with our own psychology, related intimately with our own consciousness. But in order to do that, we have to learn to meditate to focus, to still the mind, to make the mind, uh, uh, to, to bring about, we can say, like a repose, so that we can be receptive to the inspiration of the consciousness, to the inspiration of the intelligence of the being. Currently, our minds, our, our intellects, our emotions, our bodies are so active, so mechanical, reacting to nature, reacting to life, that we are not uh, uh, receptive to that intelligence, to that understanding. To be receptive, there has to be passivity. But currently, the way that we live our lives is through reacting. We talked about this last week, like uh, the external world being like the picture winding up for the pitch, and we always have a catcher, a psychological catcher that's catching the impressions that's coming at us every moment. A catcher for the lustful impression, a, cast, uh, a catcher <coughs> for the covetousness, a catch, uh, the catcher for the anger, and then we throw back. We react. If we learn to change our way of thinking, we wouldn't react the same way. If we reviewed our lives, we would see that our reactions, that our lives are cyclical, are recurring. Because we have the same elements inside of us that we did earlier in life, reacting to life the same way. If we learn to transform impressions, to not react, our lives would change completely. Not only would our lives change, but our we can say that our, uh, uh, our psychology would completely shift. We would be saving such vast amounts of psychic forces that new faculties would appear, would arise. Faculties of perception. But because we're hypnotized, we don't even, we don't even conceive of it. Maybe it's even just a nice idea, but for us ever to actually awaken esoteric faculties, we don't believe in it. We don't believe it's possible for us. Maybe we, we're all here, maybe we, we, we respect it. But there's a doubter who only believes in matter, in the third dimensional world. And this doubter is very, um, harmful to the esoteric work because we would never be able to take in uh, objective information we would always be commenting when there is a superior influence uh, coming from our beings in the internal worlds we would always critique it we always doubt it or we believe in it or this or that rather than just take it in and observe it meditate on it comprehend it just like any other phenomena of life. So this takes a type of uh, intense training. 
when we learn to transform impressions, impressions vibrate at this level of the hydrogen 48. Because impressions are coming to us from the physical plane. When we can transform an impression, we can feed that impression. It breaks down, it digests psychologically into food for the astral body, to the hydrogen 24. You understand that? That if, for example, someone confronts us with a very negative uh, uh, impression, like um, trying to attack us verbally, and we're able to take that with gladness, to bow down before our fellow man or woman, and kiss the whip of the executioner, and not react, we can take that moment and transform it into virtuous, superior emotions, which is literally food for the astral body. Only with superior emotions, through cultivating real, true, superior emotions, are we going to become very adept at astral travel. Because those superior emotions are fed by hydrogen 24, the forces that belong to the astral plane, that are inside of an impression. But currently we take in the form of the impression. We take in the shape and we react to it. We don't digest it. If we digested it, we would extract superior forces. Food for the superior mind. We can feed the, men the solar mental body through the right transformation of impressions. The mental body is fed from the hydrogen 12. If we continue to transform, to digest that impression, it feeds conscious willpower. The human soul. Tiferet. Hydrogen 6. People have asked me many times, why? What can I do to have more willpower? Because I try to do my practices and I try to resist the ego and this and that. What can I do? cultivate more willpower. Well, comprehend and transform your life. You need to save more psychic forces. I'm not saying like physical willpower, like being able to sustain or tolerate pain or whatever. I'm talking really willpower for the psychological, for the esoteric work. That food, that hydrogen six, the food for the causal body, doesn't just uh, 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 isn't just fed mechanically, just like our stomachs are fed mechanically. Anybody, good or bad, evil or 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 godly, on this planet Earth, can eat a pastrami sandwich and extract life from it. Uh, 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 someone a paraplegic can extract vital forces to say, sustain their life. Someone who is, who is a, like, what do they say, like veg vegetable, can extract life from food, from air, but only someone who does something different, who has a different type of psychological dynamic, can transform impressions. There are two types of impressions. There are pleasant impressions. There are unpleasant impressions, and we have to learn to transform them both. Currently, our psyches are made to look for the pleasant impressions, avoid the unpleasant impressions. And because we're constantly in that state, there's no synthesis, and there's no understanding of what's happening. Because we don't take the time to comprehend it. We don't take the time even to analyze it, let alone be conscious, be awake, Analyze it from the consciousness. Meditate on it. To do that will change life. The way we perceive life, the way we react to life, the way life reacts to us. Because the impressions will change in us. That is what life is. You, you notice like, uh, for example, we can say life is like 
different for every person. Totally different. Two people can be sit three people can be sitting in a room and one person can tell a joke. And because one guy didn't catch it, one guy didn't catch the punchline, that impression, that subtle impression, he didn't. Ha he's not living the same life as the other person who's busting up, laughing on the other side of the room, because he caught the punchline, because he was aware or he had the intelligence or whatever it was to receive that, to understand that. Well, the other person is living. Com they're in the same place physically, same time, same space but two completely different things going on. Right? We have to learn to see our life every day as a series of pleasant and, unple and unpleasant impressions. When we are in luxury or at home with peace or whatever, what do we normally do? We normally dream and space out. We normally feed, will feed laziness or pride or gluttony. We have to transform those moments, become aware, awaken. But to do that, to comprehend the ego inside, we have to comprehend the impression outside. And we have to learn to transform, which begins by not reacting. But if we just don't react, and that's it, and it stops there. For example, someone comes to us and says something very unpleasant, and we just keep our mouth shut and try to forget about it. That's repression. We stuff our negative emotions all the way down into the abyss so that we don't have to confront ourselves because it's so unpleasant that we try to avoid even what's inside of us. It will surface little by little, and we become a mess. We have to confront, not other people. We have to confront inside. We have to have courage to confront ourselves. Without courage, there's no virtue. Without courage, there's no willpower. Without courage, you cannot transform an impression. Because to transform an impression is to revolutionize your life, to fight against everything that you've done thus far every belief that you have, every opinion that you have, becomes challenged when you learn to transform especially pleasant sensations, or pleasant impressions. I'm not talking about changing our behavior or starting to change our behavior. Behavior will change when our thinking changes. I'm not asking people to be contrived and act like they're spiritual or act like a psychological person or act like a Gnostic. Not at all. Change comes from the inside out. To transform an impression, we have to change what's inside of us, not what's outside. We change what's inside of us, our behaviors will change, naturally. Our behaviors are the fruits of our psychological makeup. I mean, obviously, there are very negative behaviors that we have to change. Things that, uh, like very extreme behaviors. But we're not asking for people to make new personalities, <coughs> contrived ways of being. Observe the personality that's already there. Observe who's behind the personality. And transform the impression. The solar human being, the psychological human being, the hero, the god, the demigod, the bodhisattva, is fed from these superior hydrogens. And we can only extract those superior hydrogens first if we live our lives in the moment. If we can't live our lives in the moment, very difficult or maybe impossible. It's the first requisite. And it takes training, it takes practice. We never stop practicing that. It takes effort and super effort. That's what Master Samuel calls the first shock, this type of self-observation, intimate, super effort in our momentariness. Brings about a shock to our psyches, something that shocks us out of what we've believed, what we've had opinions about, all of our hypotheses of life thus far. It shocks the consciousness into the moment, 
away from all ideas and dreams and fantasies. But this takes effort. And that effort will be fuel for more effort. For more willpower. And more thelema. That is why the motto of Gnostics is thelema. Willpower. Not the wills like of the ego or ambition. But the will of the being to awaken itself. To drive its chariot that we call the human machine. We have to really learn to comprehend, to understand. Master Samuel said that naturally, about uh, uh, transforming impressions, naturally we have to comprehend the reason for the necessity to transform. We state that this is performed when one possesses an in-depth knowledge. The in-depth knowledge, the comprehension, dispels the ignorance, the grasping to the false self, to desire, to a dream, to a fantasy. The technique I'm going to read to you from Master Samuel's uh, book, Revolution of the Dialectic. Where is it? System for the Transformation of Impressions of the Day. Six steps. One, absolute relaxation. Two, reach the state of meditation. So easy, right? <laughs> Three, relive the scene just as it occurred. That is, create the scene with your imagination and watch it in a state of absolute concentration. <coughs> Seek within oneself the I which caused the problem. That is, find the ego in you that caused whatever disturbance or, or identification or whatever that was. Five, by observing serenely, one places the ego in the defendant's chair, and one then proceeds with the judgment. That is, one begins to analyze, observe, see the way it thinks, it acts. In a sense, it, it happens with the imagination, but in a sense it's like asking a question, right? Where do you come from? Understanding how do you get your energy? What impression do you feed upon? What, what impression do you, do you feed upon? Right? What other egos in me are you related to? This is comprehension in the beginning levels, right? First, though, we have to understand it in the first level of the mind, in the intellect, by recreating the scene, watching it with the sensual mind, with our imagination. You understand? Do you understand? Six, ask the Divine Mother Kundalini for the disintegration of the I, of the problem. Because it is only the forces of the Holy Spirit of Pentecost, forces of Divine Mother Kundalini. Only Isis can help Horus to annihilate Seth. So every day there are impressions maybe that we didn't transform. Every single day. At night in our meditation we have to learn to go back and find those impressions and extract the superior hydrogens after the fact. We want to awaken completely. We have to review completely everything. All the impressions. That's our life. That's the food for the, for the being, for the consciousness. We have to extract the superior hydrogens out of all of those impressions. We can only do that through a different type of psychological dynamic. And that brings about vast amounts of knowledge of nature, of self, of other, of everything. It brings about comprehension. Are there any questions? Karen? With impressions, so if are there different amounts of energy within different impressions that we encounter? Like superior we talk about superior impressions versus inferior. Mm -hmm. Or is there the same potential within That's a very good question. Something I would think that we would really we need to meditate upon. But my understanding is yeah, different impressions my understanding is different impressions have different uh, vibrations, vibratory levels, where the light is vibrating, right, in a different, uh, a different aspect, a different way. If we can understand the way a very big ego inside of us feeds itself, 
we will extract a lot more impression. A lot more, I'm sorry, a lot more hydrogens, a lot more forces. But uh, that's good. It's always something to think about. What's the difference between extracting the hydrogens from an ego and liberating consciousness from the ego? It's the same thing. Same thing. So that energy is always living within the ego. I mean, it's dead, but living, but it's always there to be extracted. Yeah. So what we're really doing by this sleep, the it's ego sleeping is in the ego, right? It's dormant. Mm -hmm. So we're going back and we're taking it, extracting the moment, those forces. There's, we could say there's like astral light there in the impression, mm -hmm. and it's the ego that swallows it up to strengthen itself. When really, uh, it's that same astral light that makes the, the planets orbit, stay in their orbit and have life because they are transforming all of that astral light perfectly, right? And s they are uh, cosmic creators, sustaining life. For us, we receive that light through impressions, and we have to transform it so that we can sustain life and light, consciousness be awake in us. So I would, I would think, yeah, different impressions have different uh, vibrations, mm -hmm. different amounts of energy. And when we liberate consciousness from an ego, then the centers are able to receive more hydrogens, to save more hydrogens. Mm -hmm. And we reach a higher level of balance. As the ego dies, the consciousness is born, and the li our life changes, and we s reach more and more psychological balance, more and more peace. I'd like to go back to your example of somebody presenting a negative impression. And okay. Um, instead of... Um, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Okay. Um, so, you said that some people might have a tendency to stuff that down. Yeah. And ignore that. And so instead of that, we should... We should not react, but observe, right? Observe, yeah. Observe deeply. Well, I mean, it's, it's difficult, especially Even if you're really in your face to know what to do, what's correct. You know, I mean, I mean yeah. passive is the best. Let me let me read. Do sometimes. Read to you. Yeah, of course. Later in meditation, you have to confront it. You have to bring it up, mm -hmm. and just sit with it. Mm -hmm. and that's not easy if you want to repress it. Right. You'd rather dream it, then you see your mind trying to dream about something else. Oh yeah. Because you, you what you really want to do is go break something pieces. You want to go take it out on someone, or you want to go eat a sandwich, or you want to go play a video game, or you want to go... You, there's so many things that we can do in order to, con to, to confuse ourselves. Mm -hmm. And even in meditation, we're sitting there and the mind's trying to do that. Oh, we're trying to dream about the past anyways, yeah. because we're not willing to confront. It w or it wants to confront what's wrong with the other person. So oh, of course. <laughs> what's wrong with you. Always wants to blame another. Yeah. Master Samuel says, we have to learn to receive with gladness the unpleasant manifestations of our fellow men. And only in that way can we work with the second logos, <coughs> the second force, the Christ. That's the work of a bodhisattva. So, so this person presenting their angry self, they're not going to appreciate you saying thank you. Uh, they're not well, going to appreciate Well, obviously, in this world, we can't, be, we can't be too rub it in your face like kiss them on the cheek, you know what I mean? That's just going to make them more angry. Right. We have nice. to, through comprehension, we have to become more and more smart. You know so what we I mean? Just kind of intelligent. We take our best shot at reacting correctly and then sit with it later. Absolutely. Later. Absolutely. Okay. Sometimes you just keep your mouth shut <laughs> when you want to flip out and explode at mm -hmm. your fellow mm -hmm. fellow man, your fellow coworker, That's or your super effort for the moment. Whatever. Yeah. That's your super effort, and you just try to be quiet or <coughs> try to <coughs> understand the fact. Yeah. They're in pain. And you obviously yeah. you don't want to feed a, a negative situation. I mean, if, if they're wrong and they're trying to nail you to the cross, as they say, at work or something, and you're going to get in trouble with your job and they're wrong, just keep your mouth shut. Don't try to, don't try to make a bad situation worse by saying, oh, you're right, you're right. It's my fault, it's my fault. Right. right. No, that wouldn't be very not. smart either. No. You know what I mean? No. It's better <laughs> if you just not a problem. learn to put yourself in their situation. Mm -hmm. Put yourself, mm -hmm. at, like Tongle, uh, it's called a Tongle in, in Tibetan Buddhism, placing yourself the other and seeing it from their perspective mm -hmm. and then 
seeing that you have that inside of yourself, mm -hmm. that type of ignorance, and then you forgive them. Hey, mm -hmm. I, I, I understand. I totally understand. Recognize it as and later, a non event. Later, if a you don't hold a grudge against them, if they're sitting at the cafeteria eating their food, you could, if they sit next to you, they can sit next to you and it doesn't bother you. Mm -hmm. That's changing your way of thinking. Mm -hmm. But to do that, you have to comprehend. You understand that something is making you, is affecting you if you have it inside of you. Absolutely. Exactly. But yeah. if you're blaming, you're not changing. You got it. If you're blaming, you're reinforcing uh, mechanistic, your own sleep. That's the only thing that you're guarding. You're just asking for another five minutes. Just another five minutes. I don't want to wake up yet. <laughs> hmm. Is it possible to say that through comprehension of a negative impression, we may one day be able to protect ourselves from negative impressions? Like, um, for example, you know, I, I work in a bar, so I, I, I'm confronted by a lot of negative impressions mm -hmm. by people who are intoxicated. Yeah. And of course, I may see in them a negative impression within myself, mm -hmm. you know, that we may have all, you know, experienced. Sure. Um, through that comprehension, is it safe to say that I may protect myself one day from, I don't know, receiving it? Any longer, like, feeling... Oh. Like, I, I guess I kind of confuse myself. I, I, I think I understand what you're saying. Like, through comprehending it, maybe that'll stop happening to you externally? Yeah. Like, kind of, like, once you comprehend that negative that negative impression will maybe someday you protect yourself from, from reacting to it. Oh, you you protect your you could protect your you could protect your consciousness from it. Yeah, you won't react to it, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, will it happen again? That's karma. It depends on your karma with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If it's your karma that someone's going to come and beat you up in a bar or something twenty years from now. Maybe maybe twenty years from now you might be a bodhisattva awake, right? With with maybe on your second mountain, who knows? But if it's your karma, it'll happen. <laughs> right? So we have to be smart, I mean but uh, I think if that's is that what you're asking? Well, I'm trying to uh, like I'm trying to think of a way that I can protect myself from, from interacting or like absorbing all that negative impression. Um well, 'cause I'm in a I'm in a situation where the thing it's is Kind of we we have to learn also to put ourselves in good situations. Yeah. Surround ourselves with with not saying I'm not saying pleasant impressions. I mean they're pleasant. Um, especially when they're more pleasant as we as the brain shifts. So really putting ourselves in places where um, there's like a higher a higher vibration of impression. You know what I mean? I would never recommend to someone to you know work in a brothel or. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because th there's no way. No man that I know could transform those impressions on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. M maybe Jesus Christ. No man that I know physically could do that. Maybe yeah, bars are very heavy places. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're very heavy places. idea of um, impressions as food and sustenance mm -hmm. to are we able to observe that directly or is it always through the ego? Oh no. You can observe it directly. In absence of the ego. Or through transforming impression. Did I answer your question? A friend of mine had an experience where an intimate told him internally. <coughs> you see and showed him different things in his life, like on a screen. You see this, you see this, you see this? You're feeding me terrible food. You need to feed me better food. Or you're going to be in trouble. So that meant that uh, that person, through different habits and different things, was not taking in high vibratory right, forces, by of energy, through impressions, they need to put themselves in better places, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. better music, better atmosphere, better uh, associates, 
know what I mean? It's like the difference between eating an apple and a Twink. Exactly. It's the difference between eating an apple or a Twink. You got it. And I'm telling you, you should go for the Twinkie every single time because it tastes <laughs> great. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, it's a very good example. We always go for the Twinkie impression. Because it defi- definitely represents a, a very high level of complexity in terms of the amount of, <laughs> and the amount of refinement that goes into it. You know, there's a lot of embodied. Break down for us, man. In terms of like how much, you know, like they got to take all the, <coughs> they got to take all the, the, the Vi- germ, vital forces germ out and everything yeah. out of the wheat, and then they got to take out all the minerals it's out true. of the sugar, and they got to take all the turn it into a cadaver. Yeah. And make it taste really good. And make it taste good. That's exactly uh, how it is. For us, that's what we go for. We go for the music that we listened to when we were in high school, college. We go for the same type of people singing the same type of psychological songs. Right? Yeah. That's where they get the word clip up. Shells. Emptiness. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Do we... How does it work when we're out of the body in the astral plane then? I mean, most of the time we're projecting within our own psychological world, right? But mm-hmm. are we receiving impressions in that way? Or are we transmitting those are internal impressions. Those, those are all internal impressions. Yeah. Okay. Memories are impressions. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Memories. You're either having like memories and projections, or you're awake and you're receiving impressions from superior forces. Or both. Or both. You have to learn to differentiate with your practice. <coughs> Take years. Our memories are just impressions from the past age again. That's it. Just forms. Comprehend them. Who's who are the memories feeding? Every memory, for one's impression that we took from the outside world, didn't transform. Didn't transform. We're like top heavy. We have a lot of trees and a lot of cars and a lot of people and a lot of words, a lot of old situations and parties and all these things, all stuck in our minds. And for some reason, they pop back up again, and then they pop back up again. So, Master Samuel says that the memory is the ego. He's trying to show you that relationship. So if we're meditating and we're trying to concentrate on something and some seemingly completely unrelated memory keeps popping up. It's related to something. So so you should follow up on Absolutely. that, not just try to squash it. In the meditation course on uh, NasticTeachings.org, it talks about that. When, when And in the Dolce tradition of Tibet and, and in all of the really, when you're meditating to comprehend, when, when something comes up, if you become completely aware of that, you see there's a very intimate com- uh, connection between that memory, so random as it may seem, to uh, what it is that you're meditating for. You know what and comprehension comes from. Yeah. When those memories come up and your mind's telling you, oh, you're just, your mind's wandering, but on all the other times it's wandering, it's not telling you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got it. Wandering. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's really kind of funny. <laughs> we want to continue to repress it. We want to save it, like put that Twinkie in our inside <laughs> coat jacket, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And keep that Twinkie for later because we don't want to throw it away. We don't want to see what it's really made of. <laughs> to us, it's uh, it's perfect. It's bread and it's cream, easy. and yeah, it's a tasty treat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and then it comes out in our meditation, and what does the mind say? Oh, put that away! Put that away! <laughs> don't let him see it. <laughs> it's just thinking. Get, get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. From my background. On a physiological level, yeah. well, we have five different types of memory. We have intellectual memory, emotional memory, motor memory, instinctive memory, and sexual memory. Sexual memory is related with uh, our past experiences with the sexual force. You may remember very strongly, right? 
instinctive memory is the memory that the body has to digest, metabolize, right? Motor memory is remembering how to walk, remembering how to move, how to drive a car, how to ride a bike. Emotional memory is related normally with uh, different egos that remember a particular flavor, maybe like of a type of person. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, this person is sort of like that person that I knew in the past. <coughs> and so maybe they're like this. You know what I mean? That's a type of emotional memory that we have. Or maybe we have an emotional memory with our significant other. Some little, little egos forget. But big egos, they don't forget. Big egos, when something traumatic happens, or whatever, no, no matter how long ago it was, or whatever, big things, they don't forget. Emotional is here. And those, what we call m uh, emotional or astral representations, recurring dreams, come from that type of memory. Stored, stuffed. Those are like lunar atoms, you know what I mean? That have been eliminated. Like, like, like baggage, astral baggage that manifests through emotions. Intellectual memory is memorizing concepts and different things. And in this day and age, most of us are so stuffed that like, for example, when we start studying like a new idea, a new concept, we start forgetting other ones. Oh wait, I knew that, I aced that test in school, but I just can't remember for some reason now. <laughs> because we're stuffed, we, we stuffed that, that warehouse to the brim <coughs> with concepts and memories and uh, planning in the mental plane. In the mental plane, we like uh, are like our our houses are very messy, stuffed with all sorts of awesome ends. Because we just go and pick something up in life with our impressions. Like this. Mm, oh, <laughs> good way. Oh, yeah, very, very interesting. Take the pencil here. Yeah. Mm. Until we just have this big. <laughs> like huge thing on our backs that we're just walking around. Oh yeah, I like it. Throwing it on <laughs> on our backs, you know what I mean? Yeah. Treating ourselves like Tibetan yaks. Yeah. We're like <laughs> wrestling <laughs> with impressions. With memories. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what it is. 